In the world of modern magic, one man has redefined the art form of illusion. This man has made it his quest to share his illusions with the people of this planet and, in turn, bring the magic of the world's people to you. Join us now on a journey through Franz Harari's Magic Planet. To an American, it's amazing. We think that magic is technology, but here, magic's real. Welcome to Mexico City. Tonight on Magic Planet, we'll be taking you to the mystical country of Mexico. A world filled with ancient tradition and secret Aztec mythology. At the same time, we'll be visiting a convention of modern magicians, where you'll get to see some of Mexico's most fantastic illusions. We'll also be taking you to some ancient Aztec locations as we follow the design of my most daring illusion yet. I wanted it to reflect the ancient culture of this place. An illusion that would capture the spirit of Mexico itself. If you're just tuning in, this is Magic Planet, a showcase of the world's most astounding illusions with your host, Franz Harari. Well, our first stop was the 10th annual Convención de Dino, or Dino's Convention. Now, this was a gathering of literally the best magicians in the country, and I can tell you from the time we arrived, the magic never stopped. Dino's Magic Convention offered a huge variety of acts, from dancing showgirls to Harry Potter protégés. There were even a few acts that defied all description. The convention also unleashed a bevy of eccentric and eager illusionists onto the cobblestone streets of Mexico City.
This is Mexico City, a city of people, art, passion and danger. Modern architecture, high finance and Santeria may often reside in one city block. A contrast of science and superstition may be found here in Mexico City. Before the arrival of Franz Harari, our camera crew had the chance to meet up with Harari team member Joaquin Ayala. Joaquin is himself a world-class illusionist with stage shows at Caesars Palace in Vegas, as well as other venues around the world. Joaquin brought his dynamic stage presence to the streets of Mexico City. I'm always waiting for Franz Harari, he's always late. I told him, Franz, I want to meet you where the picture of the shh girl is. This is the picture, he's not here. It's always late. And our cameraman managed to witness the whole spectacle without getting arrested. Hi, I'm Ayala. And then I'm proud because I'm Mexican and then I'm here at the heart of Mexico. And this stage is just set up for Franz Harari in concert. But I think Mexico is still very mystical and magical. And to all of this travel to this wonderful city, to my country, I would like to say, welcome to my country. Welcome to Mexico City. When you come to Mexico, you need to learn how the people survive in this country, how my people survive here, straddle with traffic, straddle with people. It's a lot of crime in Mexico. Arriba. Well, I'm going to make him disappear. Gracias. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Sleep. 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 Wake up, wake up, wake up. Mr. Harari and Joaquin Ayala travel to the ruins of Teotihuacan in their hunt for the perfect illusion. We've got nine days to figure out not only what we're doing, but how we're going to do it. Well, let's see if we got some inspirations from Teotihuacan pyramids. The place is so rich in history, we could literally choose anything. Teotihuacan provided not only a glorious backdrop to their conversation, but it gave them some clues to what the illusion would actually be. If the um, Teotihuacan were of the belief that these pyramids were a kind of cell phone to the universe, then is this thing about crossing from one universe into the other? I mean, like the anthropic principle that says that there are multiple universes, possibly an infinite amount of universes, all occupying the same space. I think that we have some kind of that stuff here. Well, maybe that's what they were talking about. Maybe, with, maybe these guys are... What they were trying to do is link one of these universes to the other. And if that's the case, then ultimately is the illusion that we want to do here about that. Uh, think of this. Think of two objects occupying the same space. In my show, I do a passing through metal. Where'd you, where'd you come up with that? What was your inspiration for that? My inspiration was uh, when I saw magicians trying to pass through a mirrors. And I said, well, I think metal that right. will be more convincing to the people to go through. I try to do special effects that you can see on the movies, but I do those special effects live. 
When I'm driving or when I'm by myself, thinking on my inner thoughts is when I come up with something cool, you know? And then, the way to make it work is that I need to go to the shop and build it. And make it for real, because ideas, you can have great ideas, but those are just ideas. You need to make it work. You need to put it on stage and then try them, you know? Magic as a craft is the art of deception. And deception is the practice of distorting someone else's reality. Misdirection is really a misnomer. It's directing attention, not misdirecting attention. When you want an audience to look at a certain area of the stage, you have to focus their attention there while other things are happening out of their frame of reference. As an illusionist, I present to you a puzzle just enough information that you fill in the missing blanks. The true magician, the true illusionist, is your own imagination. Good magician really empowers the audience to help them remember that they're the magician in their lives with the power to strip away old programming. Theatrical magic, you know, it stands for this idea that, that the human condition can be transcended. And that's a message of hope. If you consider that magic is an art, art, you don't need to understand art. Art, you just feel it. Art moves your feelings. If you wanted to touch the heart, you need to move those feelings by moving all of these senses. This episode of Magic Planet takes you to the mysterious country of Mexico. Tonight, as we look into the traditions of modern magic, we will show you a candid look into the creation of one of our most dangerous illusions yet.
Teotihuacan and Aztec mysticism presents a number of mystical riddles for the scientific community. Riddles that ultimately help develop Mr. Harari's own illusion. Get this. The perimeter of these pyramids are exactly the same mathematically and geometrically as the perimeter of the pyramids in Egypt. But even more than that, the ratio of the footprint of these pyramids in relationship to their height are a derivative of pi, which means <laughs> that yeah. these guys, for one, understood pi and how important that formula was, but more than that, started applying it. One or all of these pyramids, I'm not sure, actually has mica, a form of metal mica in its construction that was brought from some crazy distance. Now, why do you think that the builders of these pyramids were so specific as to the materials, and on top of that, how were they able to achieve this literally perfect architectural symmetry without any metal instruments, any measuring gauges whatsoever? Okay, so what if it's a levitation? What if what we're talking about here is that the Duriwakan figured out a way to manipulate the properties of physics themselves. Like what? Like a, like, like a walking through, through a pyramid? Walking through, like passing an object through an object or, or controlling gravity as a wave. In a sense, if you can stop gravity, you can, you're floating. You're floating anything. You're, you're, you're building pyramids. I mean, hypothetically, they could have used that technology or, or those principles to build these things in the first place. Imagine the same way you're creating that illusion we create the same illusion on a much grander scale, but we don't do it with a coin. We do it with something that matters, an animal, a person. But we do it on a massive scale, and we do it with risk. The key to the illusion would soon be discovered in the very stones of the pyramid itself. So what is it we're sitting on here? Obviously, there's a, there's a lot of science going on here that they knew that we don't. Maybe the pyramid was built here because there's some other geological phenomena to this place. Maybe there's like some what? sort of, maybe there's some weird um, uh, geo-electromagnetical surge down here. Or maybe there's, I mean, I heard there's a lava tube here. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 actually, the Aztecs, they really believe that the moon and the sun, they give birth from those lava tubes. When I got to the top of the Pyramid of the Sun, I discovered this cluster of butterflies flying around only the apex of the pyramid. And I thought, what caused them to want to remain right there? So it got, it got me thinking, maybe what's magical about these pyramids isn't the fact that they're so big, but they affect every living thing on Earth, including these butterflies that want to stay directly on top. But, but you know also, that, that goes into something bigger. Magic is absolutely everywhere. It's there. You just gotta look for it. Inspired by the technological riddles of Teotihuacan and the unmistakable power surrounding such sacred sites, the Harari team decided to follow the example of the mysterious butterflies and perform an experiment in levitation. Maybe in between France and I, we can create something, something magical. It had been decided. In dedication to the mysteries of Teotihuacan science, France would levitate Joaquin high above the streets of Mexico City.
hunt for real magic and the roots of modern illusion, we traveled to the Sonora Market in Mexico City. The Sonora Market got everything about Santeria, everything that you need to do a course. This is all witchcraft. Courses for getting successful in business, for getting successful in your love life. There is a course for everything. Santeria is a macabre blend of traditional Christian saints and pagan rites. It's really a colorful picture of devotion and superstition all combined in one practice. This is a protection for your business. Not really? Not for your business. You put this like in the main interest of your business and then the business is going to be fine. You know what we need to find is some sort of protection for you if we're going to be hanging you off the so side what of a building. Do you have something in purple or pink? What do you like? Purple? Shut up. Purple would be good, wouldn't it? Tail of a rattlesnake. A fang from a coyote. Abundant seeds. Metal cross. Oh, that's another one. No, that, that's the protection. Okay. I got a lot of stuff, man. And that's for you. That's for your hair. Holy spray. Holy spray. Whoa. Can, can, can I use a little bit? Oh. Uh, you holy spray. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Rather than being a dark worship of evil, as it is often depicted in the media, Santeria gives a Christian tradition to the face of magic ritual. Into this world, the Harari team shared some of their own magic. Okay. Okay, ten minutes. Okay, let's grab it. You light it? Okay. Actually, why don't you light it? Okay, hold on. Got it. That's good. Hey, that's good. Good. The question became, how would I create this, this optical illusion of the invisibility of a suspension point? If there was some way that I could create the invisibility of Joaquin's suspension, that would then give me you know, a, a perfect illusion, a true optical illusion of a levitation. Eventually, Joaquin himself would face the perils of a levitation, where he would be the subject and not the illusionist. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Now, give a kiss to the calaverita. A kiss to the calaverita. Wait, wait, wait. A kiss to me too. Okay. Thank you. In the meantime, some playful collaboration would ultimately contribute to the success of the illusion. Imagine that this is you. Mm. Imagine that we can figure out some way to create suspension points. Imagine that you're holding on a rope, right? But we've got three pieces of rope. Those three pieces of rope become those suspension points. We get a bunch of guys, a bunch of big strong guys, so that we do exactly the same thing as you just did with this little uh, skeleton guy. Well, do you know what? If this doesn't work, I'm gonna look like this tomorrow. Yeah. Now the psychology of the technology of a levitation is really quite simple. It's creating the illusion of the invisibility of a suspension point, like a hummingbird. 
If you've ever seen a hummingbird seemingly float in the air, it's because his wings are moving so fast, your eyes can't keep up with it. This episode of Magic Planet takes you to the mysterious country of Mexico. Welcome back to Magic Planet. If you're just joining us now, we're here in Mexico City. And aside from seeing some amazing magic, we're also learning about the real magic of this country.
tell you, magic, my art form, is one dominated by men. However, this convention actually dedicated an entire show to just the ladies of magic. The magic tricks are not important. Everything in magic for me, it's personality. Everything. The way you talk, the way you communicate with the audience, the way you perform, the way you manage yourself, the way you look. Your attitude on stage is what makes your magic work. Magic tricks is just tools. Like for example, a, a singer, the tool for a singer is his songs and the lyrics. But the way he sings is the way he's moving your feelings and makes you react that way. A magician doesn't make the miracles with his hands. He makes the miracles with his aura of style, personality, you know? It's not the magic tricks. You're watching Magic Planet with your host, me, Franz Ferrari. All right, here's a question. What's that thing I see lying on his groin? Uh, it's called escarabajo. Oh, like yeah. a scarab? Like a scarab, scarab? Yeah. scarab, yeah. What's the importance of a bug, a scarab? Why a scarab? Why does it matter? This dung scarab represents the immortality in Egypt, Egypt and so many different cultures. So eternal life. Eternal life, that's right. exactly. Actually, since we got here, we've been discovering all these parallels between Egyptian culture and, and the uh, Tutiwakan. 
and it almost seems as though they're in attune to the same technologies. You've got the Teotihuacan, and then on the opposite side of the globe, you've got the Egyptians that seem to be doing the same thing. Is it a collective consciousness, or what is it that's making these two totally polarized um, communities apply some time. of the same technologies, right? Ancient mysteries aside, the question now was, where would the illusion take place? So originally, I wanted to do this levitation on the top of the, um, of the Pyramid of the Sun. But truthfully, it seems wrong Absolutely for wrong. me, for one as an American, to come in and create technical, optical illusions in a place that's this spiritual to begin with. Yeah, the whole Mexico City happens to be magical or mm -hmm. sacred. Since everything is sacred, why don't you find the middle of it? So look, I want to find exactly where this place is, because this map shows nothing of what Mexico City looks like today. So, if we can't shoot at an actual archaeological site, then maybe what we do is we triangulate off of all three sites, basically forming our own pyramid. And that puts us right there. So the question is, what is that? And more importantly, what is there right now? Okay, let's go see. Let's go check it out. What is this? What's this green line here? That's the subway. Isolating the perfect location was no easy feat. It required tedious scouts through neighborhoods that often had no street names. This is the spot right here, the top of this apartment complex. The center of the triangulation of, of these two pyramids, it's an area in Mexico called San Antonio Abad. Mexicans, they feel that this area got some kind of very special energy. And then by coincidence, the triangulations of those pyramids, the center is that same area. Why do I keep getting the number 13? My ticket number to go see the show is number 13. I'm staying in room number 13. Now this building is number 13. I was in seat 13 on the airplane, I swear to God. I'm a pretty paranoid, superstitious bastard. It's the day of the illusion, and after hours of tedious setup, the Harari crew felt confident about their task, with a few exceptions. Let me point something out to you, and I discovered this earlier. These ropes are already separating. Look yeah, at they, this. They are not rated for... Look at this. That's a long way down. And the fact is, these four guys are going to be pulling you up to your starting point at the suspension. Now, the reality is once you're here, you're in my hands and I feel okay. Because at that point, we're into all the engineering that we did. But before that, you've got to make it from down there, up all the way to the top of this building, in the hands of these four guys. If you're cool with this, we do it. But if you're not cool, we shot the whole thing right now. Hey, what do I always tell you? Don't tell my wife? No. The time is now. Ah, I'm the time is it. now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Remember this? Oh, yeah, yeah. The holy bag. So it's got all kinds later, of later. real magic in it. All right. My people, man. You know, I was never really superstitious, but as you said, the time is now. Let's do it. Okay. Okay, put one foot up. Good. All right, let him hold you. Okay, pull! Okay, bring the foot up. Pull the feet up! Feet! More head! Head! Keep going, together! Good. Okay, Joaquin, I'll see you upstairs. Good luck. Now, obviously, what we're doing here isn't real. I'm not telling you that I'm doing real magic. What I am doing is an optical illusion. In fact, it's the illusion of the momentary discontinuation of gravity. Now, it's been theorized that gravity is a wave. And if you could turn off gravity for just a moment, then you could levitate anything. Now, the fact is, what I'm going to be doing is a series of physical and optical misdirections to the audience here on location as well as you at home. Having said all that, 
gravity will exist and it will be very real and very dangerous. With the help of a few strong arms and some fairly unreliable rope, the illusion was ready to be performed. We know that everything in this world is made up of mass and that that mass has a center of gravity, in other words, a balancing point. All I really needed to do is figure out how to suspend him off of that point and then in turn make that point disappear. Time to turn off gravity. Ready, all the way around. Drop the rope. And bring him up. You cool? Good. Good work. Good work. Here, enjoy your audience. I need to, I need, I need to say, I need to say thanks to the gods. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Magic Planet, here from the heart of Mexico. I'm Franz Harari. Good night.